When I was in middle school, we wandered around and put tape on the phone, the lockers, the toilets, our history teacher. Then we cultured the bacteria. They made us stop after we accidentally cultured strep throat. Yo, what up? The space station, that's what. I'm Trace, thanks for continuing to watch D-News after that joke. The problem with those tape experiments is we always assume it's toilets that are the grossest, but it's more commonly things like shared landline phones or door handles. If you watch movies about space stations, you probably think of them as futuristic. In the future, super clean, right? Like, unfortunately, that's not actually the case. Space stations are super gross. Even after a shower, there are potentially many billions of bacteria and fungi on your skin. There's no escaping them. So when you're trapped in a canister above the Earth, they exist there too. During the 15-year flight of Soviet, then Russia's Mir, cosmonauts would regularly clean the surfaces of the space station to fight the scourge of bacteria and fungi. But in 1998, U.S. astronauts opened a rarely accessed panel and found a large, free-floating mass of water the size of a basketball. Without gravity, moisture had begun to coalesce, forming spheres. The Mir crew then embarked on what must have been a truly disgusting hunt and found two more globules. And get this, they had color. Two were brownish and a third was cloudy white. They sucked up some samples and found amoebas and protozoa and dust mites. Ugh. Space is a crazy place. It's not like you can just open the window and air it out. Whatever lives on you or me hitches a ride to what may be a bacterial heaven. A PLOS One study from November 2016 found bacteria love space. They're even better at creating biofilms, higher density populations, and may even be more capable of causing diseases. Another study in Pier J found Bacillus cephensis grows 60% better in space. Fun and scary fact, it got its name cephensis after it was found on spacecraft at the Kennedy Space Center Spacecraft Assembly Facility, SAF. New species, all thanks to space exploration. More recently, in a study of the Japanese module Kibo, that was basically like putting tape around my school, astronauts took samples from the incubator, an air intake, air diffuser, and bum bum bum, a handrail. Their paper, published in NPJ Microgravity, noted that Staphylococcaceae and Enterobacteriaceae were the most common on the space station. Normally, they're found on human palms, and species of these can cause some pretty nasty illnesses. Salmonella is a type of Enterobacteria, and in tests done with mice, Salmonella flown into space killed the mice two days earlier than regular Salmonella. Whee! The space industry is taking this seriously. In this study, they also found species related to the human stomach, as well as those from water and land-based ecosystems on the space station. Another study in microbiome found actinobacteria, important for soil systems on Earth, but also a possible cause of skin irritations and inflammations. And this is a humans in space problem. Before it was launched, Kibo was scrubbed with isopropyl alcohol and had less than 200 bacteria per square centimeter. But after a few years in space, there were 50 50 times more. On Earth, bacteria have to compete with chlorines, soaps, other naturally occurring chemicals, naturally antibacterial minerals like copper, other predatory and competitive species, and of course, the never-ending UV blast from the sun. In an effort to keep bacteria from taking over the football field-sized flying hamster tubes above us, space-bound humans keep very clean and are tested, and space-bound equipment is cleaned and sanitized. But as we said, that's not always enough. The problem with bacteria on space stations is that we don't always know what they are. Species have to be collected, transported back to ground, and then DNA sequenced and analyzed. NASA is working on something called the LOCAD PTS, the Lab on a Chip Application Development Portable Test System, which will hopefully be able to test surfaces for pathogens in minutes rather than culturing in a lab. As we look to asteroids, Mars, or beyond, we're gonna need to figure this out. If we don't, we could end up with a nightmare scenario. Bacteria or fungus that naturally lives in or on humans, that mutates and thrives in space and causes a rapid onset illness millions of miles from home. Sounds like a movie plot, but top scientists are working to make sure we never have to make that biopic. <laughs> biopic. We can't do episodes like this without our sponsors. No domain extension will help you tell your story like a .com or .net domain name. And because you watch DNews, you can get 15% off domain.com's names and web hosting by using the code DNews when you check out. You wanna know where most of the bacteria around you live? Check out this video right here. And thanks for watching DNews. Let us know if you have any science questions down in the comments and please subscribe.